Hey guys, today we're going to talk about carnelian because I did a video where we found a great big giant carnelian and uh, well, some people really don't know an awful lot about it. Now you know we did the video where we found the six pound carnelian. a little chance to swing around the side of that. Notice the color. The color ranges from a yellow to a brownish red. You see over in here it almost looks amber like the color of almost like a beer bottle color. That sort of amber brown. You also remember this guy that we found. They're fairly unremarkable. You know, they will transmit light. That one doesn't show it very well. Got a laser on here trying to pop it through so we can see it in this in this light. Transmits light fairly well on the back side. We do this inside and it looks fine. Outside it's not going to show very well. But this is a carnelian. Most of you are going to associate carnelians with this guy. This bright red, orange with the bands. This is a carnelian agate. Agates are basically a chalcedony, which is what all of this stuff is. It's a fingers and thumbs discussion. Chalcedony with alternating bands of different colored material. So your chalcedony could be opaque, which would make it an onyx. And that's pretty common with some of the agates that you might find along the Great Lakes with darker opaque colors. It doesn't make it any less of an agate. It's still chalcedony, it's still banded, it's still an agate. In this case, the chalcedony has impurities of iron oxide, which turns it to this rusty reddish color. Now, the amount of iron oxide that you find in it will make it the difference between dark red and sort of a chocolatey brown color. Now the closer you get off to the chocolatey brown color, the closer you get to a material that's called sard. Sard is also a chalcedony. It's also a carnelian. It really depends on where you're from on whether or not you're going to call it sard or chalcedony or carnelian or give it a color with one of those names. Now here's carnelian as it comes in a nodule. You can kind of see it looks pretty angular. You can see almost in there that there's some banding. There's also a pocket in this that allows it to transmit light a little bit easier. But also a carnelian. Now this is a carnelian in the rough. This just came out of an alluvial flow, just soil. It was dug out of the ground, pressure washed off. But you can see that this also has carnelian. And it's uh, it doesn't look like anything that you would expect it to look like until we get around to this side. And we see that really super cool pocket of cherry carnelian coming through it. That's a really super bright red, and this one's not fully cleaned, but you can see that it's a super bright red, and that's just a product of the amount of iron oxide that was present when the stone was formed. Then we get to our classic banded agates that we all have known and seen, 
And this is also chalcedony and carnelian in the same stone. They just pick up layers almost the same way a, a, a piece of hail is formed by traveling around and around and around through the cycle and it picks up a different layer of a different kind of material every time it travels through. Now that's one theory. The other theory is that it formed in a pocket and there was an amount of chemicalized fluids that were present and when they solidified iron oxide was present and in the clear bands maybe iron oxide wasn't present I kind of like the hail ball theory a little more myself but you decide whatever it is you want it, nobody cares really we're out here collecting pretty rocks we can go down the rabbit hole of what these are called all day long Somebody might call that a root beer carnelian agate. Why? I don't know. Because it looks like root beer? It could be. Would you call it a carnelian agate? A chalcedony agate? It's got bands. It's an agate. Doesn't matter. There's some really great banding in it. It's chalcedony. It's carnelian. There might even be some citrine in there. It's all a product of quartz. So, it's kind of immaterial. Now here's a piece of plain chalcedony so that you can kind of see this for for perspective. This is just plain clear chalcedony. There is nothing to this, no banding, no nothing. This is what this guy looks like when you put iron oxide in, in the in the chemical mix when they're forming. Now if you have a little more or a little less you get pretty striking colors this goes almost orange there's others that will express peach or tangerine tones they're all an artifact of the amount of iron oxide that's suspended within the stone now sometimes in the field you're going to find these stones unpolished. Now these guys are polished so that you can have a good idea of what they look like. When you find them in the field, they're going to look like this guy. And you can see the carnelian coming through this with clear and white chalcedony. There's little pockets here, petroidal crystal pockets, that sort of travel all the way through and fill up the stone. On this side you can actually see that it started to grow a new crystal formation. And sometimes they just form a seam. Now this is also carnelian. It's a really light yellow, but it is a carnelian all the same because of the amount of iron oxide present in its, in its development. Just a cool little fact. But, either way, we collect these because they look cool. And we could go down the rabbit hole of what to call them, or where they're supposed to normally originate. We kind of prove every day when we pick up these things that where they originate is pretty clear all over the place. They're very widely distributed. So we can find agates anywhere in the world. It isn't just in the Middle East or Africa or Australia or in the case of this lovely little rock, Iran. You can find them everywhere. And I do mean everywhere. And most of the time, you're going to find them coming as a nodule. Now, these are cute little guys. These are just adorable. But as you cut these, you can see that there's a small amount of carnelian present in these. These will form bands and structures as they get 
worn down that allow the carnelian to be seen a little more clearly. It sort of refracts in some stones. You can look at a stone from an angle and it can take on a peach or a tan or a red appearance. And you turn the stone just a little bit and you can see the carnelian refracting through the stone. Just a little hint, but almost all agates that you find are going to be a mix of clear and this orangish pretty chalcedony. And this is what everybody expects to see out of chalcedony, that pretty orange. Most people don't expect to find it going off to that or even this. But it's still a pretty stone. Now we can't always find stones this big, but you can find other things around. Thanks for sitting around for this little discussion on Carnelian. I hope you learned at least a little something uh, about what's available out there. I try to make sure I'm, I'm describing these things as best I can for you guys, so if I'm missing something, please let me know. Thanks, and please remember to hit that subscribe button. It helps us go out and search for all these fun stones, because we're doing this for you guys. Until next time.